Hi everyone, this is Karen Fettinger. I'm Journey Coach Senior Leader number 525 from Medina, Ohio. And I'm here today to show you the desktop fish tank that I made as part of the Fun Stampers Journey Paper Challenge. And uh, a lot of my coaches and friends have asked for me to show you how to make it in a tutorial. So that's what I'm gonna do today. Um, I just wanted to show you uh, what supplies and things you'll be needing to make the tank. So we'll get started and I'll move my camera up on the mount so you can see everything, okay? Hang on. That looks pretty good. Okay, <clears throat> as you can see, we're gonna be using the Turtley Awesome stamp set, which is SS0442 and the Rainbow Bubbles stamp set, which is 0418. And the Turtley Awesome stamp set, I'm really only using it for the uh, seaweed here on the bottom. Um, and within the Rainbow Bubbles, I'm using this fish, this fish, and the coral on the bottom, okay? Um, I have a supply list here, uh, which is everything you need to make this tank, okay? Vellum. I said one sheet for stamping fish ta uh, fish images, uh, eight and a half and by 11 inches. It really is probably more than you need, but I always like to have extra case of air or what have you. Acetate, I have down two sheets, eight and a half, 11 by 11 inch sheets for walls of the fish tank and the base strips for attaching your fish and your sea life to the bottom of the tank. Uh, silver foil cardstock, two sheets, eight and a half inches by 11 inches, sheets for tank stand and lid of the fish tank. Paper trimmer scorer, white liner adhesive and sticky dots, Dollar Tree seed beads from their craft aisle, which cost a dollar. And I have a box to show you what they look like. This is what they look like at the Dollar Tree. They come in many different colors. I have a few colors here to show you, like the purples and pinks and blacks. They have all kinds of colors, blues, um, anyway, but that's what they'll look like and they just cost a dollar for all these little seed beads. And I used a whole container to fill the bottom of the tank with gravel, okay? Okay. Um, uh, Dollar Tree Lumines uh, Luminescence Battery Operated Tea Light, which I get this type of tea light um, that is uh, one that will twist on and off um, as opposed to the kind with the switch on the bottom. I uh, adhere this tea light to the underside of my lid of the fish tank and I like to just be able to turn it on and on by twisting it. If you put this type of uh, tea light, which you can, if you put this type on, you're gonna have to adhere this to the underside of your fish tank lid with maybe washi tape or something that's easy to remove so that you can turn your light on and then re-adhere it underneath there. But I prefer these because you just twist them on and off and you don't have to remove them from underneath the lid, okay? All right. You'll also need some cardstock, bubble gum, kiwi slice, and green olive and I'm saying four inches by six inches and that should be plenty to to stamp and cut out everything you need for the tank. You'll need a half inch by two inch piece of whipped cream cardstock to mount the tea light onto and then washi tape or scotch tape for adhering the tea light to the underside of the lid. Detail scissors and craft glue. So that pretty much is everything you need to do this project okay. All right let's get started and I'll show you <clears throat> the pieces that you're going to need, okay? <clears throat> we'll start with the fish tank. The fish tank front and sides is all one piece and it will measure four and one quarter inch by 11 inches and you're gonna score at the half inch mark, three and a half inch mark, seven and a half inch mark and 10 and a half inch mark on the long side. And then you're gonna score at the one quarter inch mark when on the short side. Okay, <clears throat> and I'll show you how I do this because I know it's confusing um, terminology-wise which side's scoring on the long and the short, but I'll show you as I do it, okay? Um, you're also gonna need a piece of acetate. 
that measures four and a quarter inches by four and a quarter inches, and you're gonna score the bottom side at one quarter inch, okay? Basically, what that tiny little one quarter inch fold is for is so that when you start to assemble your tank, you're gonna have a little ledge on the inside where your bottom of your tank is gonna sit on top of that, okay? So that's basically how we assemble the tank, okay? This piece, I put a silver cardstock piece for the bottom of the tank, and that is four and one sixteenth inch by two and 14 sixteenth inches, okay? And you may have to trim a little bit to get it to sit down inside your tank nicely. Okay, and this, this piece I cut at four and a quarter by four and a quarter, but you may end up having to trim off a corner just to make sure that it fits down inside the tank without any overhang on top. Um, I left that quarter because I just wanted to make sure I didn't cut it too short. So, and you can use any printed background paper you want for the back of your tank. I liked this one. Um, you could probably use um, a sky background or a water background or even make a custom one with maybe a background stamp of sea waves and, and go over it with clear pigment ink and uh, pan pastels to customize your own little background. But anyway, I liked this one. It was simple and it worked out well. Okay, and then the tank base or the stand is what I've been calling it, five inches by six inches of the silver card foil, and you're gonna score all sides at one inch. <clears throat> and then I did the tank top lid at five inches by six and two sixteenth inches, which is a little bit bigger, and you're gonna score all sides at one inch, okay? All right, well, let's get started with the tank assembly because that's an important part to start with and we'll get, get going on that. All right, so what I was saying about this piece, when you have your long acetate sheet, let me bring this up so you can see what I'm talking about. To make sure that I had the front of my tank at measuring it four inches across, what I did, I just it's easier sometimes just to make sure you get your um, scoring in the right place. I went in and I just scored, let's just go back this way. I just scored at three and a half inches to get the corner or the corner where the front and the sides meet. So I did it at three and a half inches. And then what I did was I just flipped it around and I did it at three and a half inches. Again, scored right here, okay? So I scored at three and a half inches from either side. Then I wanted the sides to measure roughly, you know, three inches. So what I did was I went in from each end and I just um, scored at the half inch mark, okay? So that'll end up giving you, here's that half inch, three and a half inches, four and a half in, or excuse me, seven and a half inches, and then this will be ten and a half inches when you when you lay it on your your uh, board here. You'll be able to see where the lines line up, okay? And then you're gonna start, turn it this way and you're gonna score it at one quarter inch, okay? And basically, the, again, that's forming the ledge for your, for your tank bottom to sit on, okay? So we've done all that. What I did here was I cut out that small little rectangle that's on the end that you don't really need. And I did the same on the other end. And then at the three and a half and the seven and a half inch marks, I snipped in to the score line and then I did a little wedge cut so that it'll make it easier for the sides to turn in without extra, too much extra acetate in the way, okay? All right, so that part is done. And the, the back piece was four and a quarter by four and a quarter and you're scoring at the quarter inch mark here okay, on the bottom side of your back piece. All right, so that's done. And we're gonna go ahead and assemble the tank, okay? You'll need your white liner tape and this four inch piece or four and a quarter inch piece. This is where I am going to put white liner tape on the edge 
of each of these sides. I can see it's sticking to my fingers. Okay. Okay. All right, so you'll tear it off and you'll do the same to the other side. Okay, you can burnish it down with your bloom tool, which is the tool is awesome. And then we can just pick, pick up our liner on there and pull it off. All right, now we're ready to assemble our fish tank. Okay, now you wanna make sure the bended part of the fold is pointing in towards the inside of the tank, which I put the adhesive on the wrong side for that reason, so I'm just gonna reverse my fold. Okay, so the sticky side is facing in, okay? And what you're gonna do is you're going to, I did this, this helps a lot. Line up your fold on a grid line and I'm gonna line it up from the bottom up because I can see better that way. It is really hard to see. I'm gonna pull it down a little more. Hopefully you guys can see still. I think that'll work. Oops. Okay, and then you just press it down, all right? So now we have the part of the back attached. Now we're gonna go to the other side and you're gonna marry your edges over here. on that edge fold okay and there we are now we have the front and the back of our tank and you can refold your um, your fold lines so that it's a little more squared off okay so there it is and you see I have my little ledge piece on the inside here Okay, you can see that a little better from this side. But you have that little quarter inch piece that's gonna hold your base of your tank, or the bottom of your tank. Okay, so that is that. Now we're gonna get this bottom piece. And again, the bottom measured four and one sixteenth inch by two and 14 sixteenths. And we are going to use our white liner and basically tape all around the perimeter of the tank bottom. This stuff is really sticky, which is supposed to be, but wants to stick to my fingers. Okay. All right. Same thing with the bloom tool. I like to burnish it down a little bit. And then we're gonna pick off our liners to that. This is the tricky part, getting it down inside. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and insert, I'm gonna just start by inserting one end down in there so that it's in there good. And then kind of bend it as I go. All right, and it's gonna stick to your work surface if you don't get it lined up just right. So what I'm gonna do is flip it over and you can see what I'm doing here. <clears throat> so 
making sure it's all squared off. And for some reason, that is not laying down where it's supposed to. And don't worry a lot if it's just not perfect because you're gonna be covering all of this with gravel, you know? So you're not gonna be able to see that it's not super perfect. Um, I just noticed my piece that I cut is a little off on the bottom. So, and, and because it's towards the back of the tank, I really don't care. Can you see what I'm talking about? There's like a sliver here that's not right. And that may just be because I set it in there crooked. But anyway, you get the idea. That's basically to hold um, the gravel inside your tank walls, okay? All right. Then we take our tank base, which measures five inches by six inches. And we're gonna score it on all sides at one inch, okay? So hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. Scoring it all around at one inch. So there's one. Might be better to do it this side. There's one. I'm gonna go back and go over this one gently. Okay. And that's what you end up with, okay? <clears throat> now what we're going to do is we're gonna take our detail scissors and we're gonna snip into the score line on the long side, okay? Reverse and do the same. Alrighty, then you can fold all your score lines. I like to do it up in the air because I can just gently bounce it till the till the crease forms. And I'll do it over here, just gently bouncing it as I go, and it, it falls right into place. I like to do it that way. Okay, and the same with this side. And the same with this side. Same with your flaps. There we are. So now what we will do <clears throat> is we're going to take our sides and we're gonna fold them in and adhere the front and the back to form like, like a box lid in a sense, okay? And then we'll end up turning it over to mount the top of the tank too. But anyway, so we'll start with this. I'm gonna use white liner tape again for this and I'll put I like to do three pieces just to make sure it sticks good on each of these corners. I'm staying in frame. I, I've not been able to get used to this videotaping stuff yet. I know I need to, but... Okay. All right, there we are. So we have all of our tape on our corners for our base, and I'm just gonna press them down with my uh, bloom tool. And then we pick off the liners. Now I will say 
this probably is not a project that you want to give to little children, okay? And I'll tell you why. Because the beads are loose in there, and if you tip over the tank, the lid's gonna fall off, and the little seed beads are gonna go flying, okay? Um, I mean, if you were gonna give this to little, little kids, I would say adhere the lid on permanently, but then you would not be able to put a light in it, okay? Um, but anyway, oh, one more side, I missed this one. <clears throat> okay, so now we're gonna fold in the, the side and we are gonna bring up our piece here and try to make the corners as tight as we can, okay? Same thing on all sides. All right, there is our stand base all put together, okay? It's gonna look like that. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip it over, just like that, okay? And we're gonna take white liner again. We're gonna go around the whole perimeter of the, the top of this base, okay? And I'm going to use scissors this time just to make it cleaner looking. Now, my, my tank has fish in it, but you know what? You could very easily put one of those turtles from the Turtly Awesome in there. You could put... Um, crabs from that snappy birthday set that we used to have that had all the crabs on it. You could put, um, oh, the little alligator bloom box that we had. You could even put one of those little small alligators in there to resemble a lizard or something, but that would be cute in there too. You're not limited with fish. So, okay. Um, then we're going to burnish these down. And then remove the liners, which I'll start here. Now you do have to have patience for this project. This is not necessarily one that's gonna come together quickly Okay, all right, so I have all my um, liners removed, and now the fun part, okay? You wanna line up your tank and center it the best you can onto your bottom. Okay, and again, don't worry if it's not perfect. It'll be okay once you put the gravel in, all right? So there it is, we have it on our base. Okay, and so now what I'm gonna do is set it aside and we're gonna work on the, the lid, which is basically the exact same thing that we did with the base. You are gonna score it at one inch all around. One. So it's gonna look like that again, okay? And we're gonna snip on our long sides to the score line. I might've gone over a little bit there, but that's okay. Flip it around, do the same to the other side. And to the side. Okay, and then we're gonna bounce our bounce our folds into place. They will fall into place. It just takes a little bouncing. Okay, 
and then I'll do the same over here. Okay, everything's folded. And we're gonna do the same thing again with the white liner on our square corners, okay? One, two, three. I even thought about this before too, that if I had had 12 by 12 size sheets of vellum and um, acetate and silver foil, can you imagine making a large tank? You could put your ship from your, um, your June bloom box in there and a lighthouse in there and all your fish, even some whales from, you know, some of your stamp sets, it would really be quite the fish tank. But that'd be a very large project to do too. But it would be cute. And somebody may take initiative to do that before I would, but anyway. But this was a cute little quick, well, not quick, a cute little project for the challenge. And I apologize if I'm going in and out of frame for you guys. I'm not the best at this, at this whole video thing. You guys are pros out there, I know that. I'm not so good at it. All right, back to the same thing we did before. We're gonna create our corners and make them as tight as we can. Oops. Okay, and you can see I have an itty bitty overhang here. It's okay if you have that, just go back and trim them off. I might have that at a few of these places here. All right, so this is our lid, right? So now what we're going to do is the actual adhering of the tea light, okay? So basically you open your package. Okay, and these are supposed to last for 60 hours each, so that's quite a long time. Um, anyway, you're going to take your light and you're going to twist the top off completely, okay? Which, it's not cooperating. There we go. And see that little white piece of paper? You want to remove that and then put it back on and twist, twist your top back on. And as you see, if you tighten it tight to the, you know, righty-tighty, tight to the right, it's gonna turn your light on, and if you go back the other way, it'll turn off, which is wonderful, I love that. 
Okay, now I'm going to get a scrap piece of, this will work good enough, I think. I gave you specific measurements for your piece of white, but it doesn't have to be that precise. Um, basically, you're gonna get a piece of white cardstock like this. <clears throat> you're gonna take your sticky dots and you're gonna go ahead and apply them to the bottom of your tea light. Oops, that one worked. And it's just blinking because I'm pushing contact onto the bottom. Okay, I put three on there, okay? And then you're gonna affix it to the white cardstock, okay? So it's nice on there firm. See now, look, I can turn it on I can turn it off real easy. Now this part, you're gonna set it down inside your lid, okay? And I just used washi tape. You could use scotch tape. You could use whatever you wanted to on the inside here. But that holds that end down. And this holds this end down, okay? And there you have your tank. You can turn on the light so you guys can see. All right, see? Fish tank, isn't that pretty cool? All right, so now I'm going to insert my fish tank back in there. And what I did for this, you don't need adhesive all the way down. I just used my, um, excuse me, my sticky dots for that as well, okay? So I just put one on each corner and you want to put it on the back side of the, okay, look for another one. For another one. All four corners. Okay, and then you just kind of sit it down at an angle, okay? And push your background in. Whoops. And that is not, apologies, that's not cut right. Gonna cut it a little bit bigger. <clears throat> Oops, wrong blade. Oh boy, you guys ever have days like that? Okay. Okay, dokie, dokie. Let's try this again. Let's take off an eighth off of it and see how that works. Like I said, depending on how you fold your backs and pieces and stuff together, if they're not perfect, you're going to have some little bit um, either overages or unders, okay? Now, if you see here, this fits pretty good on the um, back side of my tank, but it goes over, so it's about a quarter over the top. So I'm going to remove some. And that's good. I didn't want it to be too short. Right? All right, let's try that. Make sure it's not standing over the back of the tank. And it is not, well, let's see. Maybe by a sixteenth. So I'm going to take up one little bit more. Okay. Took off a 16th, and this should be perfect if I'm wrong. Oh, got the wrong back. Okay. Perfect. That'll work. Okay. Yep. Okay. 
So now I'm gonna adhere this to the back of the tank, which wrong, t did I put sticky dots? There we go, one. and four okay all righty time to set it down inside oops going to put your tank lid back on and just to show you all see you have your little tank okay all right now what I was saying before about your fish you're going to take if you have scraps of acetate that is great which I have quite a few scraps laying around here basically what you're going to do you're going to take your scissors and you're just going to cut I don't know, maybe one and a half inch um, long strips that are maybe a quarter inch wide, okay? Real easy. All right, so you're gonna take it and you're gonna fold in a little bit of it to kind of make an L shape. And that's gonna be the base of the stand that's gonna hold your fish, okay? So then you take your fish and you're gonna put a sticky dot on the back of your fish. Oops, well, you're going to try to put a sticky dot on the back of your fish. Okay, and that. And I removed a little bit of my paint, so let's try this other one. Here's what I'm going to recommend. If you can take your sticky dot off with your finger, which I just did, you see that? Then I'm going to stick it on to my fish. And try not to pull off any paint because or the silks off the back, which that happens sometime. Okay, so here's my little L-shaped strip that I had made, and I'm gonna stick the end right over that sticky dot. Okay. All right. Now he is ready to get adhered. And you know what, if you put him in the tank and you, you realize that he's standing up too tall, that is no big deal. You just make another fold to make your base a little bigger and bring down the length of your fish. Okay, if that makes sense. So like I initially, you can see where I initially folded on my fingers there. I just made it a little bit bigger to bring the fish down a little lower, okay? And um, anyway. But that's how you do it. And you're gonna adhere this piece of plastic to the bottom of the tank. It doesn't look like it's giving it much support, but once you have your gravel in there and the coral um, that you'll put in the bottom just the same way, okay? So the fish go in like that, or this fish does anyway. What I, I did a little bit of a cheater on the smaller fish. Um, rather than adhere them to a little base like that, I went ahead and put my plants in on a base like that. And then I adhered my fish to the, like the tip, just the tip of the, the tip of the seaweed. Okay. So it looks like they're swimming by. Okay. Um, so anyway, I'll make a base for this to show you what I'm talking about. Just use this sliver here. So, on this, you can just fold a base. Okay, so there's my L shape again. And I'm gonna stick a sticky dot on the back. 
This is my seaweed at real low at the base, okay? Okay, pull it off. And then you're gonna attach it real low on this L frame, okay? So you're gonna put it way down where it creases, like so, okay? And you can remove any of this that's showing in the background through the hole in your seaweed there. So like I'll cut it at an angle and then you can't see it. Now you're gonna put a sticky dot on the bottom of the base and you're gonna stick that down on the bottom of your tank, you know, and you could take a pen and push down on it, okay? So like when you have, you're gonna have a sticky dot on the bottom and then you're gonna push down on it. So we can put some weight on it and see how that stands up. So then that's basically what you're doing with all the stuff that goes in the bottom of the tank, okay? Um, only, this is the only fish that's getting a stand all to itself, okay? And I might even fold that a little shorter. Yeah. And you can always cut off some of this too. Okay, so then I'll stick a sticky dot on the bottom of that and stick it down and you'll have a standing fish, okay? Um, I'm not happy with this one because I cut it too many times. Let's do another one. All right. I'm not going to make it as long, I don't think. All right. So we're going to fold the bottom. Get a sticky dot with my fingers. I'm going to stick it to the back of the fish and try not to bring off the paint. And then I'll stick you back on there. There we go. Okay. That's actually better. All right. So that's basically what you're doing, okay? Now, if you, I mean, if you um, wanted to, you could put more than the uh, one on there. You could maybe spread them out and put two if you would like. I, I didn't think I needed it because basically what I'm doing is I'm balancing the nose of the fish up against the coral that I'm going to stick in there so it won't fall backwards. Um, and the one stand worked out fine. So anyway, that is how you do that. Okay. Um, I think I explained all how to make the coral and everything else here. Um, if I didn't, I'll make a repeat real quick. You stamp your fish on vellum, use silver embossing powder over it, heat set it with a heat gun, flip it over, and you're going to paint it with your silks. Okay. I don't know if I, I might be repeating myself, but I'll do it again. The large fish... The large fish was sour lemon, cool pool, and beach ball, okay? That made this large fish, okay? And the smaller fish were bubblegum. The smaller fish were done with bubblegum and citrus cooler, okay? And the same thing, I, st I stamped them onto vellum with clear pigment ink. Then I shook the embossing powder on, heat set it, flipped them over, and I colored the silk on the back, okay? I actually grabbed, I should have an orange and a pink fish in each tank. So anyway, so that's the fish. And these can get mounted, the small fish, to the plant. Like I said, you can just mount one, put a sticky dot on the back and just stick it on there, okay? The coral. Same thing, you're gonna make a base for that like you did for the uh, the larger seaweed. Just cut your little acetate strip, bend a base for it. And you want the base big enough to take a, a, a sticky dot, so it's gotta be a fairly decent size. And then you're just gonna stick your coral down near the crease like so, okay? And that's basically it. Now we can start assembling our tank, okay? So I'm going to put like about. So 
I'm going to put it right about there. I don't know if I can, if you guys can see this too well. Can you see it on an angle on the side? If I put my hand there, there's the L-shaped base and it's stuck to the back of the coral. And again, you're gonna put a sticky dot on the bottom. You're gonna put it down on the bottom and stick it down with a pen pencil to make it a firm grip. And then that'll be ready to go, okay? Same thing with this one. Make your base. Okay, take a sticky dot for the back of your coral. Stick it down low to the corner where it folds and adhere it. And there you go. gonna work okay okay see how I have the L shape you're gonna put a sticky dot on the bottom you're gonna stick it down to the bottom of the tank all right let's go ahead and adhere one of the fish to here actually that's not the one that's this one all right so we're gonna find our sticky dots again. I'm gonna put it on the bottom of my little stand that I made. And I'm gonna put it down inside the tank. Let me get a pen ready so I can push on it. And I kind of want my fish to be kind of not too far forward. But anyway, something like that, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and mount one of the corals just slightly behind his nose, so that'll help hold him up. Okay. Okay. Oops. All right, you see, getting to see the picture here? See how the coral is kind of holding his nose up a little bit? I could have had that over a little more maybe, but uh, that's okay. It'll work, okay. And then this other piece of coral, I'm gonna stick kind of in front of him, in front of this large fish, oops. See. see what's happening here there can you see that okay all right so that's that now I'm going to put another sticky dot on the bottom of one of my plants and this is the green one, so I kind of want you in the middle of the back a little bit. And then I'll do one of the olive green ones. of plastic I was working with. There it is. Okay, so I'm going to cut me out some more strips. One, two, okay, I'm going to put 
point on the back of my plant, like so. Okay, and basically all you're gonna do is fold it down near the base of your plant. If you have excess, just cut it off, or too much, you can cut some of it off. Like that, okay? So, I, <laughs> good time to run out of my sticky dots. I'm gonna just have to use a little piece of uh, white liner on the bottom of this. Okay. It'll work the same way. Okay. All right, so this was my dark olive one. I'm gonna stick it kind of back behind that green one that I just put in there. And you, like I said, you can bend them back a little bit to make them stand up a little more. Pull it there forward. Okay, and then I'm gonna do this one. I'm gonna fold it close to the base of the plant like so. I'm gonna cut off about half of that. Okay. And I'm gonna put a piece of the white liner underneath here. If you have sticky dots, go ahead and use them. They're easier. Um, I just ran out, so. Okay, and then pressure that on. Pull that off, and here's our last piece of seaweed that's going to go kind of back in this back corner a little bit. Okay, and I'm getting ready with my pen to stick her down. All right, can you all see? There's that much. It's leaning back because there's nothing, um, no gravel in there. But that's the, the gist of it, okay? And now there's these two fish, my pink and green fish. I'm gonna put a little bit of white liner on the back side of my fish. Just a itty bit. Okay, and probably back towards the back of the body a little bit. And I'm gonna do the same with this orange one. Hope you guys are still hanging with me here. Oh, that piece is not good. Not good, and I just pulled off some of my paint. Ah, okay. Let's use this other orange fish that I have. Okay, luckily it's good to have a couple extra in case you do that, <laughs> which is what I did. Or else you'll have to touch up the paint job. Okay, so I'm gonna put on a little bit of white liner tape kind of back towards the back end of the fish. And then I'm gonna peel it off. I'm trying to remember, what did I do on this one? Orange was in the front. Okay, so I take this and I just adhere it to the seaweed. Like so. Okay. Same thing, remove this. Okay, can you see what's going on? That's basically what it is, is you're putting it in on those those silver, or the, excuse me, the acetate little legs, okay? And now the fun part. Get to fill it in with our seed beads. I'm gonna use pink ones this time, it sounds fun. It'll take me a while to open this little container. Sure, I 
have it loose all the way around the sides. They put a lot of that clear tape. Let's just see if I can get this up. And these little beads will fly all over the place if you're not careful. <laughs> Which I'm trying to be careful here. All right, let's see. Oop. Yeah, okay, we got a little spillage. All right, now what I'm gonna do is pick up all these little pieces that fell out and just toss them in my tank. try to do. Let's try to dump them in here. Without making too big of a mess. Which I'm still making a mess anyway. Probably doing this over a bowl first would be a wise idea. <laughs> I wasn't being too wise. Okay. Some that are sticking with static that don't want to come out of the box. All right, I think that's all that's inside. Maybe not. All right, that emptied out the container. Now any that I spilled on the table, I'll pick up, and toss back in. Kind of stick to the fingers when you push down on them, so. Oh, you can try not to be messy like I was and spill seeds all over the place, but it happens. We've done it. Play with your pieces a little bit and get them to stand the way you want them to. out of the way so everybody can see the finished project. All right, so now we have one with pink gravel and one with green gravel. I have to admit I think I like the green gravel better just because I'm 
a nut when it comes to stuff. All right, let's take a look at it. All right, you ready? So there's both of the tanks, the one we just made to the right. I mean, I have my lid pushed down all the way, but anyway, you get the idea, right? It's not such a hard project, it's just time consuming and you have to be careful with your measurements and all. But anyway, there you are. I'd love to see what you all come up with with your projects. Please post them so I can see them. And I will get my instructions posted um, along with the video in the comments um, eventually, okay? I'm still working on that, um, trying to get them uh, printed up right, okay? So that is it, and thank you all for asking for me to do a little tutorial for you, and I hope you enjoy it, all right? Thanks, bye.